Hello, welcome to Steve Knows. So this is a list I put together that was a mix of showcasing what the Quest 3 can do relating to its feature set, its graphical potential, as well as titles that many people can relate to, such as hit franchises that made its way to VR. There's also some titles that I've thrown in here that are just a good time that you may not have heard of. This list is absolutely not everything at all. This year has been a fantastic year for VR, and we now have so many games to play, which is why I pushed this to a a 15 list instead of the classic 10. So please comment down below any you believe to be deserving a place in this list and perhaps it could help someone watching this video. So enough chin wagging, let's get started. Asgard's Wrath 2, the largest game that you will find on the Quest, an open world RPG that boasts 134 hours of gameplay. This game is a sequel to a great franchise that was exclusive to the PC VR space, but it's now exclusive to the Quest. So this is built from the ground up to bring fantastic visuals to the Quest platform, and it just got an overhaul to bring even better visuals to Quest 3 owners. The game is set in the realm of Egyptian mythology, so you will see strange creatures and gods that you will engage with in some of the best combat I think I've ever enjoyed in VR. It also has puzzles where you can take a new perspective, a godlike view, and manipulate the environment around you for a different style of play. If you like RPGs, you cannot get much bigger than this. This is a 10 out of 10 RPG VR experience, but it comes with the price tag as well. This is a rare full price VR game that is actually $60 or 45 pounds. But when you factor in 134 hours of gameplay, it's value. The Cabin Home Invasion. The Quest 3 has mixed reality capabilities, so I had to include some MR games. But one that just never fails to get me running around in fear and excitement is The Cabin Home Invasion. It's a simple recipe of a game, but it works so well. So you will scan your room to set it up for mixed reality, marking the windows, the tables, the doors, artwork then in this cabin game it will turn those items into mixed reality assets so the windows you can look through they will become virtual windows doors creatures can knock down and come through even a big boss will break down your wall and make its way into your room so you have to survive for as long as you possibly can whilst activating the beacon so you can call for help to be evacuated you do have rounds to get a chance to heal up and get some new weapons and ammunition but it's just so much fun. And there is another full multiplayer VR experience as part of this purchase. This is just a mixed reality experience as part of that game. So the cabin will cost you £18.99 or $25. And it's currently 33% off in the sale. Resident Evil 4. On this list, because you may know PlayStation VR 2 just got VR support for the Resident Evil 4 remake. But MetaQuest did get exclusive VR access for a VR port of the original original Resident Evil 4 game. So you can embody Leon and play one of the most loved titles in the entire franchise in VR. And it looks brilliant on Quest 3. It is so crisp thanks to those pancake lenses. And I love that a franchise like this has a VR title on this system. It is the full entire game playable from start to finish. Although cutscenes are like an outer body experience. You watch the scenes in a theater mode. Leon Kennedy's objective is to find, protect, and evacuate the president's daughter, Ashley, which has been caught by this cult plagued by the Las Plagos. This is one of my favorite games ever and easily one of my favorite VR games yet, costing £30 or $40. We are now going to look at Red Matter 2 for its sheer beauty on this system. It is a slower paced experience. It's about unraveling a mystery and engaging in puzzles, but it is a marvel to look at on standalone hardware. It can skew your expectations on how games should look. So well done, Vertical Robot. This is a sci-fi adventure puzzler set during the Cold War. And you play as Sasha, who has just awoken up in an outer planetary base camp and more of the story uncovers as you go and progress through the title. But for action addicts, there is a little combat in this game, but it's just not where it shines. Red Matter 2 even got game of the year by some big VR publication. And this game costs you 23 pound or around $30. Assassin's Creed Nexus. This game, all I would need to say is Assassin's Creed and it would perk up so many ears and my goodness, is this game freaking awesome. One of my favorite releases this year, easily. 
An amazing franchise brought to our VR headsets. And this experience is a narrative driven title that means you are in and out of the animus, embodying many different assassins. And one of them, of course, it has to be Ezio Wadatore. So you can enjoy the stunning rooftops and scenery of Italy, and it is gorgeous. You also have the environment of playing in Greece in the Spartan era and old America during the colonial times. You can expect free running across rooftops, hidden blades in your wrist, stealthy missions, takedowns from above, leaps of faith from the top of buildings. Everything that made Assassin's Creed fantastic is built into this game. It is so good and it costs you £35 or $45. Lego Brick Tales. This is another part mixed reality experience. You can enjoy it through pass through. And I find it so darn cool that this is a Lego brick puzzler that can be enjoyed in mixed reality. That means you can build things using Lego to help you complete the puzzles you face in game. The Lego worlds themselves are always so interesting to interact with. And the fact that you can look down upon them as if they exist in your room, it's like a childhood dream of mine to have my Lego builds come to life in front of me. So many may be familiar with this game before it came to VR, but now you can enjoy it in VR and MR, which kind of changes the whole game. Being able to change your perspective like you would in real life is so cool. This is going to set you back £25 or around $32. Dungeons of Eternity, one of my favorite little gems from this year. Because I went into this game thinking it was just this standard stylized experience. But no, this is a cooperative dungeon crawler that you can play alone if you wish. And it has so much charm, you could put this on a Pandora bracelet. Visually, it has an art style that works well for the quest system. But there are moments where your eye catches a visual and it will blow you away from the sheer detail and scale of these environments. This is one of the best experiences you can play with teammates as well. You can pick them up when they're down. You can share resources amongst yourselves and even come up with tactics in tough situations, such as someone has to go ranged from above. Someone else goes in with the hand-to-hand -hand combat and someone else should be healing people or reducing the numbers and being a distraction. It also boasts an incredible amount of character customization options to make your character your own. This is one of my favorite games of the year, costing you $22.99 or $30. Breachers. This is purely a multiplayer experience like no other in VR. It has been coined the Rainbow Six Siege of VR and it's not hard to see why. So the core of the game is two teams, five versus five, going up against each other, but one team is defending inside the building. The other team is trying to break into that building and take out the bomb or eliminate the enemies, whatever the game mode objective may be. So teamwork in this game is so utterly paramount. Communication is absolutely key. So windows are boarded up and often you'll find yourself abseiling up a wall and spraying a window with an explosive and telling a teammate to prepare themselves as you have a countdown. You're like three, two, one, you'll breach. You'll all dive in through the window, getting ready to take anyone that's there waiting for you to dive in. This is probably the best eSport potential title that I've played recently and has the most nuance to a team-based shooter thanks to its heavy reliance on cooperation. And therefore it makes it incredibly rewarding as well. I love, love, love breaches costing you $22.99 or $30. By the way, this is from Triangle Factory, who brought us Hyperdash, which is now a free-to-play game, which is also freaking fantastic. So check that out as well. Power Wash Simulator. Another game that was a flat-screen franchise that has become so beloved that people were screaming, bring this to VR. And they did. The full game of Power Wash Simulator, including the multiplayer mode where you can play cooperatively, is available to play on Quest, in VR. It would be quite cool if they did it in a mixed reality mode for this, actually, so you have to clean your own room. Some find it a little strange. Why do you want to clean in your spare time in VR and not real life? But there's something about this game. It's therapeutic. It's like a white noise trance simulator from the jet spray. So your mission is to jet wash all of the dirt off the environment. That is it. Simple, but effective. And this is from one of the best developers in the VR scene, N dreams. It's only going to cost you £20 or around $25 and it's oddly addictive. Really relaxing for some reason. Contractors. What list would be complete without a Call of Duty-like experience but in VR? And for that, we have Contractors. This title is a multiplayer shooter with offline game mode, so you don't need to go against people online if you want something a bit easier to play because some people are ridiculous 
and all the game modes, the classic team deathmatch, search and destroy, zombie modes, the classic ones that you can expect from a multiplayer shooter. But this one has incredible visuals on standalone hardware, it's jaw-droppingly crisp on the Quest 3. But where the game shines for me is the community-made maps and loadouts. So you can play things like classic Call of Duty maps like Hijacked from Black Ops 2 or play Halo maps or Star Wars maps and using Halo loadouts, Star Wars loadouts. I was even playing a game of Team Deathmatch in a McDonald's. And you get that for just £15 or around $20. Iron Man VR. This has to be on the list as it will allow many of you to have a bucket list experience or blow some kids minds as you can become Tony Stark and wear a Mark II Iron Man suit. It's going to allow you to speed through the air using your thrusters that you can control as if you were actually flying through the air. So you'll be leaning forward and putting your arms backwards Naruto style so you can get maximum speed. You even have to use gestures to fire your hand cannons, use your chest piece against enemies. The game also provides a narrative which changes the pacing where you will walk around the stunning waterfront home of yours, talk to your AI and things can get a little emotional in this game. This was initially a Sony PlayStation exclusive and it's now here on the Quest platform. Just the opening mission of this game though, had me literally tensing and screaming and creasing. It was such a rush when you were trying to save people from that crashing aeroplane. Iron Man VR is $22.99 or $30. The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners 1 and 2. So I've bundled The Walking Dead with its sequel as they offer very similar experiences and they are such a fantastic single player story driven title that you may want to go through the first one and then pick up the second one after you've gone through it. Not many zombie games let you get this up close and violent with the undead in VR. There is something rather shocking about taking a butcher's knife, impaling a zombie head and having to pull it off your weapon. Aside from that though, it is a very creepy game that creates a brilliant atmosphere, hours of gameplay, a huge narrative and brilliant visuals for standalone hardware. This game is a survival action horror and for a long time was easily considered the best of VR. It was one of the first fully fleshed out games, pun intended, that we got on standalone hardware. So both the first game and the sequel will cost you £30 each or $40. Gorilla Tag. Warning, if you're not a full grown adult and screaming kids bother you, don't enter this game. If you're a young person who likes chaos and hanging out with friends in such silly ways, instead of hanging out at a park drinking till the early morning, you can dive into Gorilla Tag instead. This game is a viral VR hit, with it initially being a simple side loaded experience, so it wasn't on the official store when it was first released, to becoming the most played game ever on the platform beating Beat Saber. It has an interesting mechanic where you don't use the sticks to move, you have to use your hands and crawl, but there's an art to it. It's kind of hard to master. You actually move like a monkey. So the initial premise was you are a monkey playing tag with everyone that's in the map, but now it's become so much more and it's a free experience, so you may as well give it a go. Resist. This game may be a little random for some, but it's in this list because it's a game that I have played and it's just stuck with me. I was so impressed by its open world Spider-Man swinging nature and its crisp, stunning, vibrant visuals while simultaneously offering a dystopian future with a story driven narrative with tons of action sequences and RPG elements. This game touched me in all the right ways. So you're playing someone who is in the rebellion against their police-like state who use robots, drones, and tanks and like to govern the world. You will use your grappling hooks and boosters to swing around the city whilst taking out enemies. The swinging is kind of hard to master, but when you've got it, it is so rewarding. There is no game like this on Quest, at least that comes to my memory. Although I do have to give a shout out to Swarm for being the best swinging mechanic by far, but it's just not an open world experience, but one of my favorite games. It even has Quest 3 enhancements to give new Quest 3 owners even more stunning visuals. On Quest 2, I thought it was brilliant. On Quest 3, it is gorgeous. This game will set you back £15 or $20 as well. Well worth the money, I think. Warplanes. There wasn't a flying title in this list, so if I were to choose one, it would be Warplanes, a title inspired by the old war aerial combat situations. And there are two of these games available on the store. You have World War I Fighters and Battle Over the Pacific. 
This is a rather unique and fun experience to sit in a chair, fly a plane off of a runway whilst engaging in dogfights or dropping bombs below. You'll be able to fly in 15 iconic planes and even enjoy PvP game modes so you can play against other people also sitting in chairs. But it does have a single player campaign for you to enjoy that is rather thrilling. You don't have to go head to head. You can play the story mode where you will be the USA trying to win victory over Japan. This game is just so much fun. Playing it recently was such a joy, but it was harder than I remember. Both of these games are £15 or $20 each. So that's the list. Let me know if there is something that you absolutely adore that you want to share with people down below in the comments. It may help someone find a game that they were looking for. And thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. Please check out my games, reviews and news on this channel and subscribe as 2024 is going to be huge. So have a great week, guys. Merry Christmas and happy gaming. Good day.